Why are you so excited? She <laughs> 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 has her nighttime zoom. I'm Dr. Lindsay Doe. I'm a clinical sexologist. I have my doctorate in human sexuality. I'm in the mood to have some fun. And I also want to challenge myself. When I was younger in the past, when sexuality was all around me, I was teaching it. I was studying it. I was seeing clients in private practice where we talked about their sex lives. And then I was writing about it, course curriculum, sex, sex, sex all over. I would describe it as if there was this center in my brain where all thoughts went through sex. Somehow everything was connected to sex or I had this innate ability to connect things to sex. And with time that has slowed down a bit or changed. And I want to see if any of it is still there or how much. So there's someone behind the camera. I haven't told him everything, but what I'm gonna do is have him say a word and then I'm going to see how quickly or thoroughly I can come up with a connection to sex. How's this idea? I think it's fun. If you want to play this game too, you can put a word in the comments, maybe put it in an asterisk so I know that that is the word that you want me to respond to. And then I will let my brain free for all on that word, free associate. Try me. Broccoli. Oh shit. Well, the first thing I think of is it's a species of animal that has scales on the back, pa, pa, pull, pa, no, pa, glin, pull, glin, ped, ped, bleh. It has four penises that go out like the shape of a broccoli. This is going great. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. Paragliding. Paragliding. <laughs> this is way harder than I thought. I mean, the very first thing that came to mind, even while I was laughing, is wanting to think about the dynamics of having sex while paragliding. And then I want to know who has done it because somebody has already done it indeed. And then figure out how I find them and ask them about it and, or do it myself, actually. Which then reminds me of kiting and how when I first learned about kiting, I gave this presentation at a restaurant about it. It was like free form, ask a sexologist questions. And then we got into kiting and I was thinking about all these different ways that you could have sex while kiting. And I've come up with many. Settlers of Catan. I have one for this, actually, because in Settlers of Catan, it has all these pieces. There is a desert and there are no resources of value in the desert. That's where you often put the robber. And in the instruction manual, it says something along the lines of there's nothing in the desert. And then I was in the desert because that's where I live. And I was going under this bush. I was in my bush and there was the most amazing thing in the desert. This is what I found in my bush in the desert. Settlers of Catan. Sex on the brain. Sex on the brain. Sex on the beach. Sex on the beach. Either the act or the drink. Definitely act. What comes to mind is that when I was in my doctoral program, we watched all these videos projected onto the wall. They were like four by four, maybe. All porn. Clips of porn. Just go. And one of them, I think it was called Cake or cake orgy or something like that, where it was maybe eight people on a beach with all of these different cakes and they were just smearing them onto themselves and into themselves. And in addition to the sand problem, now you have a yeast infection problem. Large Hadron Collider. Large Hadron Collider? Hadron Collider? Yeah, I don't even know what it is. World's largest and highest energy particle collider. It was built by the European Organization for Nuclear Research between 1998 and 2008 in collaboration with over 10,000 scientists and hundreds of universities and laboratories. I'm sorry. I am a nerd and I love things science and all of this, but I don't know enough about this. Oh, it is CERN. Okay. Okay. I got this. I went to this incredibly amazing conference, probably the best I've attended. It was a bunch of educators who all came together. And then I met one who worked there in Switzerland at CERN. And he invited me to come take a tour of this large Hadron Collider. You ride bicycles there to get around the collider. So uh, that makes me think of sex because bicycles were initially frowned upon because the 
people thought that they were making the women come and we couldn't have all of these sexually satisfied women. The bicycle was making women come? Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, you put it between your legs and then you ride over bumpy things and then that... <laughs> Hey, love. Because this is thriller. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. A ladybug. What's that have to do with sex? I mean, definitely thinking about them humping. It also makes me think of how they called President Lyndon Johnson's wife, Lady Bird Johnson. And Lady Birds are another name for ladybugs. And Lyndon Johnson had all sorts of interesting things with his sex life and his partner's sex life. And this is the thing. I wanted to do an episode about president's sex lives because it's fascinating to me. I've even talked with Hank Green about this on a Sexplanations episode of the podcast. And we determined that his way of saying he does not want to be the president in the future would be to say that he was going to have sex in the Oval Office. I would have sex in the Oval Office. I imagine that every president in history has had sex in the Oval Office if they have been in the Oval Office. Because I know there were presidents who didn't have access to it. And they probably weren't all with their first ladies. Cardboard. Oh, easy one. We did an episode of Sexplanations called DIY Sex Toys, where I took all of the packaging from all the sex toys that I received, and I made sex toys out of the packaging. Women's rights. Women's rights. The thing I think about there is the ship. I talk about it in an episode of Sexplanations about DIY abortions, and she would rent ships and then have people from countries where abortion was difficult to obtain, go to the ship in the international waters and get their abortion there. But then the countries would make it very difficult for them to get back in or cooperation was not had. So then she started doing a hotline where she would teach people over the phone how to take over-the-counter medications that could induce an abortion and would use drones also to fly across borders and drop off our U486, which is an abortion pill. The right, I believe, for women is to have say over their bodies. American football. I think of Ted Lasso, and then I think about how he has this relationship with someone named Sassy, and then how her best friend asks if Ted Lasso is the same in bed as he is in his life, which is this really outgoing, bubbly, quirky dad figure. And she says, absolutely the whole time. And it was so great. It was a reminder to me that we all like sex differently and that maybe her best friend wouldn't be into that. And I might not be into that either, but she was super into it. YouTube play button. YouTube play button. I think... People have seen the YouTube play button. This is for 100,000 subscribers, which is a very, very, very big deal. That's a lot of people to receive sex education. Receive sex education willingly. They sought it out and wanted to keep it in their lives. That's what a subscription is about. It's a lot of people who want to be sex educated. The play button makes me think about Nicholas Jenkins, who started this channel with me as the videographer, editor, and producer, and what it was like to shoot with him and learn about his sexuality and just exchange intimacy that in that way, I remember him saying something along the lines of feeling like he wasn't competent at flirting. And I got to, to tell him like, he is very, very, very good at flirting. And that flirting is simply acting like you have a higher level of intimacy with someone than what you have developed over time. We had that. We had really good banter. I appreciate him and appreciate him still. Incense. Incense makes me think of pheromones, which makes me think of the skunk that I held in my arms while I talked about the smell of sex. Maybe it's just that everything now reminds me of sexplanations rather than of sexuality. This episode was sponsored by Nebula. They are a streaming platform. It allows creators like myself, many, many education creators, 
to post their content in ways that avoid censorship and allow us to support ourselves. So that's super cool. Legal Eagle is a super cool concept. It looks at the world from the perspective of a lawyer. Like if I were to comment on rom-coms and porn as a clinical sexologist, it's insightful and bold. Jet lag the game totally delights me. Most recently I watched them play tag like tag your it, but across Europe. You can check out these shows and of course explanations on Nebula. If you sign up using the link below, the one in the description, you can support me directly and get both Nebula and Nebula classes for a 40% off annual plans. And if you want to check them out, become a user of theirs, you are going to go to go.nebula.tv slash explanations, which supports me, the channel, sex education, and allows you to get a ton of content from creators who are as passionate about their subjects as I am about sex explanations, I guess. Stay curious. <laughs> They're putting in my makeup. My makeup is dog saliva. Do you want to be in my face? You want to be my face. Sex on the beach, get sand in your vagina. Again. Okay. Was that anything?